So today, I've got something pretty cool in mind for a video. We're back down here at Dojo Guitar Pair, my good friend Dave Honorado. So what we're gonna do today is talk about how to find the perfect budget guitar. The reality is there's a lot of killer guitars out there in that like three to $600 range that you can get your hands on that are solid, gigable, reliable, great sounding, great playing instruments. But I think there is a method and a process to finding those guitars, those sort of diamond in the rough guitars, if you will. And yeah. Dave is an expert when it comes to all things buying, selling, trading, used finished guitars because you've bought what you've owned how many guitars you said honestly at this point i i've lost count but i know it's it's well over probably three thousand guitars and and i about the same number as amps so it's it's a lot and it's a lot of vintage stuff for you know last since the mid 80s so yeah. where do we start what's a good place to uh start when you're looking at this stuff well first of all um you know it used to be a little different uh, i used to have a different opinion about it you know I'd, I'd go on ebay and buy things but i know so many people have had nothing but nightmare experiences on ebay i kind of tell people you know if you can get it in your hands and and see it firsthand go that route at all costs um going through the hassle buying the guitar waiting for it getting the guitar opening it up sitting with it for a day and then going yeah i really don't like this you know you just wasted like basically two weeks of your life trying to you know figure out if this guitar is going to work for you or not so just go to your local shop go to go and and i always tell people buy local anyways because it keeps the economy localized and it keeps stores in business and you can go talk to somebody physically talk to somebody that you bought the guitar from then that that's a big thing you know you definitely trying to hunt somebody down on the internet because you got a problem well you know how that goes yeah. so <laughs> if i'm looking on reverb and i'm just looking at pictures here so like here's an 8485 mij squire these are usually pretty good guitars yeah. right yeah so what should i be looking for in well, terms typically, of pictures typically in pictures what you want to look for if they tell you that the guitar has been modified at all you want to see the modifications that are done up close so like um a lot of times especially with strats uh they'll modify the bridges um or they'll you know especially around the bridge area um, look first, you know, if you can get good enough pictures to blow them up to see how the string angle is over the neck, over the fretboard, you know, because like guys who do mods, if it's professionally done, you can see where the strings fall over the edge of the fingerboard. So if you've got strings that are falling off the edge, you know, you've got this, mm -hmm. you don't want that. Right. You want it to where you've got some space on both sides of the E strings. And that kind of shows you that the, actually the bridge is in alignment. Right. Um, that's the first thing I look for in pictures. So and especially if you're buying any kind of what they call parts casters, uh, people put stuff together, you know, body and a neck, and they put it all together. The first thing I, lo I look for right off the bat is to see if the string alignment is in, in correctly done. I also have this weird thing with reading descriptions, and this is just a superstitious thing that I have, but if this description is like way too detailed in terms of like this thing is a ringer 10 out of 10 yeah they're trying to would sell gig it to this all the times like that it's guitar probably sell. sucks right typically that i've found they're hiding something in the guitar <laughs> or they're trying to get more money for the guitar than it's worth yeah. and they're trying to play it up so they're hard selling the guitar too you <laughs> yeah. know and then i also look at at their history you know you go back and see if you can how much stuff they've sold the more stuff somebody sold typically I kind of look at that as like a plus mm -hmm. because it means that they've they probably kind of know what they're talking about at least you know and they're going to be able to package it right yeah <laughs> so right. it gets to your house in one oh, piece yeah. that is one nice thing about things like reverb is you can see the seller's rating and right. like reviews on right. them so you can kind of get an idea and i've even gone as far as to figure out where the shop is i'll just call the shop direct yeah. and, and be like hey can you take that guitar off the wall and look at it in hand for me and describe exactly you know what to you know what it is so what are some common characteristics that in your experience all great guitars have uh that you can just you know when you're walking into your shop you pick up a 500 hundred dollar telly for example what should you be looking for what i first look for um is any kind of structural damage um has the guitar neck ever been repaired especially in a glued in neck guitar if it has any heel damage has any um, headstock breaks, anything like that where it was compromised at one time. Um, I'm not totally uh, avoiding guitars that were fixed, but it depends on how they were fixed and who fixed them. 
um, and how big the damage was. Like say like perfect example, like on an SG like this, these guitars are so prone to be broken, usually at the heel or at the headstock. So the first thing I do when I pick up an SG, I don't even, I don't even, you know, once I look at it, I'm like, yeah, this is cool. The first thing I do is see, okay, has it been cracked? Yeah. Look along the fingerboard here, see if, if it's got the Gibson smiley face crack here with a volute or sometimes no volute is. Look at the heel around the front. Um, and see how the neck angle is, you know, see how the bridge is compared to the, the heel and see how much room you've got. If the bridge is all the way smashed down to the body and you've still got high action, it's got bad neck angle. So right then and there, I pass on it. Or especially like on acoustic, what I look for is any kind of cracks in the top, any kind of cracks on the sides, um, the, the heel, if, if there's any kind of space happening in the heel, whether this, it's pulling away from the body. Uh, there again, headstock cracks. Any kind of structural damage, wood damage, um, is the first thing I look for on, on any kind of used guitar. I try to buy guitars that are out of favor a lot of times. You know, guitars have cycles. So, you know, like if, okay, SGs are hot right now, I'm not going to go buy an SG right mm -hmm. now because I know they're all going to be inflated. Yeah. And whoever's playing them on stage right now, it's the hot thing. Everybody wants one. That's when the mass hysteria of like, yeah, I'll pay an extra thousand dollars just to get this guitar because I want it now. Well, yeah. You know, wait a year when they're out of favor and people are dumping them off because some XYZ over here is now playing a telly and tellies are hot. <laughs> Go buy the SG that you were looking for a year later if yeah. you're serious about buying that guitar. So uh, with all that in mind, you want to go do some guitar hunting? Sure. Are you buying? Uh, yeah. Okay. Why not? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the place we're going is Atlanta Discount Music. Um, it's been one of my go-to stores basically as long as I've been playing guitar. It's been here since the 70s. It's like a staple of the Atlanta guitar scene. So we're going to head over there and see what they have because they have probably the best used selection in all of Atlanta. The guy Jimmy over there who runs the place is very cool and very knowledgeable. So uh, yeah, if you're ever in the Atlanta area, Atlanta Discount is one of the places to check out. It's not the skinniest, but it's not the one. It's not that bad. I know it. Is it a good one? <laughs> yeah, uh, they're, they're, yeah I've, I've worked on a lot of these. He's actually really decently built. It's not, but it's real not. straight ahead guitar, you know, non trim, humbucker P90, volume tone, three way switch. Um, the thing I like about the GNL stuff that I always look for on any, in, on any guitar is how the front work's done, you know, how well the ends are finished, um, how well they're polished, how well they're seated. Um, the way the nuts cut, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and all the import GNL stuff's been really good for the money. I've, I've been really surprised with it. Um, heavy duty bridge, the stuff doesn't move. Yeah. Nice bass plate, you know. Um, this is a great guitar, and there's a perfect guitar for, you know, it's on sale for basically 425 bucks. Yeah. So this is cool too. Look at this guy. Squire, Tele Deluxe, Double yeah. Wide Ranges. Oh, those are great. One of the other things too I like to look for on yeah. the, speaking of the fret work is fret sprout. Yeah, right? exactly. So where the frets, a lot of times, in it if the fretboard or the neck kind of shrinks or dries up a little Finish bit, finish shrinks or yeah, and they stick out and they're sharp on the yeah, edge. Yeah, just know? run your fingers down the edge of the, the neck there and feel the yeah. the frets like grabbing your fingers. But yeah, and these are guy. yeah, these are these are great guitars for the money, and they're they're again very straight ahead, you know, strength through the body. Fret works good. This one action's pretty high. Needs some adjustment. It's got too much bow in it, and probably could use a shim in the neck, but that's easy to do. Um, Just over 152. What do you So these are called for very low money. I really like these guitars. The new Gretsch Sigmatic stuff. And okay. These are Indonesian made, but they're um, basically a bolt-on Les Paul style. Uh, really good gears. Decent pickups. Real decent bridge. Wraparound bridge. Um, for the money, these are hard to beat. They got really nice fret work, um, really well finished. Uh, they play great, the action's really good on these. I, I really like these guitars and they're, they're very inexpensive, but play really well, stay in tune really well. And, uh, and they're cool looking. They got a lot of yeah. cool features and that's cool. Know, yeah. That. 
you know, we're talking a guitar that's 500 bucks, you know, 450 right there. Yeah, and you look at the fret ends, the binding work, the nut work, good set of gears, you know. Uh, even the pickups sound good on these. They're not, you know, it's not like a guitar that you've got to rip them out because they, they don't sound good. So, small details like in the binding, um, how the nut is, you know, sitting in the in the slot here. There's no space between the, the bottom of the headstock and the nut itself. This is a cool guitar, dude. Yeah, and like I said, for 450 bucks, man, you can't beat these guitars. I mean, they're, you know. And that's a humbucker route, yeah. too, so you could just drop any, Anything. whatever I've, you want I've there. replaced a bunch of those out for people. You can put a, a, even a better style, like Nashville style, tunematic on this. Where they're skimping on stuff is typically the electronics. So, um, you know, that's easy, uh, easy upgrades, you know. But the husk of the guitar is actually what's really cool on these. You know, Match so. your uh, LTD. Yes, man. Yeah, no, right, Lord. that's right, yeah. <laughs> So the, you know, decent neck pickup in these. in good shape i mean it's used but it's it's really never been used you can tell so this is like an 03 so whoa it's in great shape it's in really good shape yeah 350 bucks you know i mean the color's unique but <laughs> it's a thing it's a thing but for you know 350 bucks you know neck's nice and straight it's not all screwy um fret work it's probably got typically epiphone has frets that pop up um, I do a lot of regluing of frets on, on Epiphones. But that's not a big deal. It runs about 100 bucks, And basically, I just go back and I glue all these down and then level it. Um, Epiphone doesn't like to glue their, fret, their frets in because it's an extra process. It's more money. So, you know, you go back and you do it. But, but yeah, great guitar for the money. And, I mean, this is probably, yeah, so I'll tell. So, yeah. no, no chambering, really? No, it's, but it's got some weight. It's not, you know. Oh, yeah. It feels like a palm. You know. It's actually... Not Maybe too bad. Yeah. You know. I think they do one chamber in the yeah, I was going to say it's top. lighter than I thought it would yeah. be. But, uh, you know, like I said, the neck angle's good. The strings are right where they should be. How much is that? 350. Play it. It's here. Yes. So if you put something else in them, yeah. dude, for three hundred and fifty bucks, if you want or need a less Paul, yeah, this does the Paul thing. They are hard to beat. They really are. I mean, um, the front works decent on them. Um, 
and fit and finish is good. I mean, you can look at the binding, look at the top on there, yeah. and it's, you know, they're, they're well done. You know, you got to keep it realistic. I mean, of course, it's not going to be a $2,500, yeah. you know, traditional. But, but, but think about that difference in price, $350 to $2,500. Yeah, right. So even if you put, you know, three or $400 worth of parts on this guitar, yeah. you're still looking at seven, 800 bucks, right. and you're still looking, that's less than even a studio model. Mm -hmm. So uh, I always su suggest the Epiphone stuff is a, is a great, usually a great bargain. Especially um, used, man. Yeah, I mean used, you can't beat them, you know. So because this was what probably five or six hundred bucks new. Um, that one actually would have been more with that top on it. So probably that would have been about seven hundred dollars, probably six fifty. So yeah, man. Wow. Okay. So this one is a classic series three bolt Mexican made Strat three bolt. Yeah, let's let's talk Mexican fenders for a second. The Mexican fender stuff is is probably one of the most popular guitars out uh, for the price range we're talking about. Um, and quality wise, I think they're probably one of the best. Um, typically, the fret works really good. The edge of the fingerboard is always typically pretty pretty well finished off. Yeah, so typically these uh, the quality control on these is really good. Um, the bodies and necks are basically the same necks you get in most of all of the um, upper mid-range uh, American stuff. So it comes out of the same factory. Honestly, it's as good as any 70 Strat you would find in a vintage shop. Where these kind of skimp at is typically the bridge or some of the electronics. Uh, but they're not bad, they're just not quite as, maybe as good as the, the American stuff. Um, but here again, what I'm looking for in this guitar, like, you know, the e high E string, the low E string, is it hanging off the neck? Is it is it centered right? This one's in good shape. Ne this particular one needs a little setup work. The bridge is a little out of whack and the radius is a little off. So the good thing about the three bolt is you have a micro tilt adjustment in this. So you don't have to take the neck off to adjust it. You just basically lo loosen these three up, take an Allen wrench in here. There's a little plate down there with a screw. You can tighten it and it'll actually change the pitch of the neck here oh. without having to take the whole thing apart. So you don't have to shim the neck or anything? Nope. And that's uh, one of Leo's, that was one of his des final designs that he did for, for Fender. But as far as a guitar, you know, a really good Strat right off the bat for 500 bucks used, or you can find them even less. I've seen them for three, $400. Um, these are hard to beat. And the good thing about a Strat, much like the Epiphone uh, Paul we saw, you know, you can buy every part for this guitar, so you can change out on this, everything on this guitar if you want. Uh, if you find one that you pick up that you really like the way the, the guitar sounds acoustically, which is another thing I always look for in guitars, if you just go in, don't plug it in, just hit it acoustically, on, like on a solid body, and see how loud it is. The louder they are, the better they're going to sound typically through an amplifier. If they're dead, you can't reverse that. So don't think that, oh, well, if I put some other pickups in this, it's going to help this dead guitar. It won't. Um, but this is, a, this is a great guitar, man. It does all the Jimmy stuff, you know. Here again, you know, for 500 bucks or less, yeah. this is a, a great place to start, a good platform to modify, or just tweak out and leave it alone, and it's just a great banger, you know? Yeah. Something you don't have to worry about. It's mm -hmm. this is These guitars, all of the guitars that we've seen today so far are definitely giggable guitars that you can just take to the gig, basically set them up a little bit, and you can go play gigs with them. Yeah. You know, there's nothing here that we're showing you that isn't that ready, you know. I gotta admit, dude, this actually... You want that guitar. This surprised <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I really like this... the Gretsch stuff. I really do. So, moral of the story is, you can absolutely get a Ringer guitar for yeah. three to 600 bucks, man. Yeah. You know what you're looking for. Yeah. You got a reputable shop, or you know what you're looking for online. Right. You should be good to go. This video is kind of geared towards finding used guitars because generally you can get more bang for your buck with a used guitar yeah but this is a new guitar yeah right that you don't have to go used this thing actually <laughs> punches above its weight class yeah yeah i'm not like affiliated or sponsored by no. Gretsch at all like we just pulled this off the wall yeah this is all strictly um, just walked into a shop and yeah no. dude for 450 bucks i think people are sleeping on these yeah so uh to me what what i'm feeling is the next video we have to do is taking a budget guitar and making it great with uh, with some upgrades sure. and some work. Yeah, that would totally. Yeah, I do it all the time. <laughs> Let us know in the comments uh, yeah. if that's something you'd be interested in seeing.
Thanks to Dave at Dojo Guitar Repair. Follow him on Instagram at Dojo Guitar Repair. Yes. And then uh, this is Atlanta Discount Music. They didn't know we were coming by today. We just showed up. Yeah, we just showed up. <laughs> started filming. But these guys are really cool. I think they yeah. have an Instagram as well, Atlanta Discount Music. Yeah. If you're in the Atlanta area, come by the shop. Say hello. These guys are awesome. Yeah. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Rhett Shaw. Subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. And let me know in the comments what you want to see next on this Finding Perfect series. We've done Finding the Perfect Electric, Acoustic, Amp. Maybe we need to get into pedals. Oh, yeah. Know. Pedals, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Parts. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.